Okay, we've had another down day today as the narrative change from this bullish trend and posture uh, that we've been talking about for the last uh, few weeks, a few months. Uh, are, should we be getting more bearish? I'm going to break down some charts and show you what I think uh, with what we're seeing here. Um, I'm also going to show you one pocket of strength uh, that we have with all the headline that's out there, kind of a forgotten sector uh, from the fact that there's not very many headlines impacting it. Uh, with earnings and tariffs and such. And we're going to look for a trade idea in there. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, August the 1st, 2018. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Welcome to those of you who are watching us for the first time. Glad you found us. Keep coming back for more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by mousing over the Market Outlook, uh, Market Scholars logo in the bottom right corner of your video. Click that red subscribe button that pops out there. Also, click the thumbs up icon down below the video. That lets me know two things. You like the video tonight, you want us to keep doing it uh, for free here on YouTube. Comment on anything that stands out to you from tonight's video. Join our Market Outlook daily email list. There's a link popping out in the, the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter for more content like this and join our Market Outlook community on Facebook. All right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 first here. And you can see uh, with the small decline today, uh, it brought the intermediate line really darn close to the 80th percentile. So sitting at 80.56 where my cursor is over here. Um, that is still a strong bullish posture despite the decline. But of course, tomorrow, I mean, at this rate, tomorrow is going to be below 80. And, and if that's the case, barring a big move to the upside in the market tomorrow, um, then we'll have a weak bearish posture. Now, that means that we'll have a light pink shading. That doesn't mean that the trend's over. You can see this posture lasted for five plus months with a couple pink shadings in there. So it doesn't mean that this trend is over. Um, but obviously we're not as strongly bullish anymore. It's a weak bearish posture. Uh, we're still holding on to that bearishness or bullishness. In fact, you've got a bullish intermediate confirmation signal again with this oversold momentum line that's not nearly as oversold as the last one um, combined with, an, with a strong bullish posture. So that's a bullish signal. And this one, just like the two days ago, um, this bullish intermediate confirmation still has a near-term line below uh, the 50th percentile and, and with the possibility of a bullish near-term low point. Not very strongly bullish because it's barely a higher high and it's dipped its toe below 20 on the blue line down here, but nonetheless, by definition, um, that's two out of three days so we've had a bullish intermediate confirmation signal. Uh, so the market in the short term is trying to find a bottom right here. Of course, breaking through 2800 changes the story. Um, but the market's trying to find a bottom in these last few days uh, with this pullback that we've had. And of course, remember, you know, last July, uh, we talked about the, how we went flat after July expiration uh, and into the end of August and the August expiration when we got the weakness. So, you know, we're essentially flat um, after the July expiration, ups and downs, but by the end of the day, flat. Uh, we'll see if we end up getting um, some weakness heading into the August expiration. It's just seasonally a, a time uh, for rising volatility <coughs> heading, you know, from the beginning of August heading into August mm -hmm. expiration. Uh, earning season's most of the way over with, uh, and we're heading into the summer months um, right before, um, you know, the end of August where the market just doesn't hardly do anything. People are on vacations, uh, school's starting in some areas, about to start in others. Uh, and so the markets really get quiet those last few weeks. Not as quiet as Christmas, those two, the, that week in between Christmas and New Year's, but pretty quiet. Um, so that's the seasonal aspects um, <clears throat> that we have going on. But regardless, the, the market sentiment, which is just barely coming up off of a low below 50, which typically leads to multiple months, multiple intermediate runs. Uh, we're currently on the second intermediate run uh, that's that we're now from July 9th to August 1st. We're almost a month into it and we typically expect one to three months um, And we talked about this idea that we'll get you know more of these Intermediate runs during this market this long-term rally uh, More than we did before so it will be more volatile But you see during this you know coming off the low point that we've had with this market sentiment uh, low 
you know, we hit this below 2600, we're up to 2800, despite what seems like more bearishness, you know, some pink here, some pink here, um, you know, a brief inter bullish intermediate run that didn't last very long, uh, but at least formed a, a higher low point, and then the longer intermediate run, and now the current one that we're on right now. So, and we'll see if this one, I mean, that intermediate runs consist of multiple near-term runs. Uh, so the last near-term run didn't last very long. Um, we'll see if this one lasts at regular 7 to 12 days, or even is able to get above the 80th percentile or not, uh, as we bounce off of this short-term low point that it's trying to form. I look at really quickly at the Dow Jones, not as bad, not bouncing up as much in the near-term line, but also still strongly bullish, more um, bullish than what we see on the S&P. The NASDAQ, though, pulled back the most, still hitting support on the Fibonacci retracement and still trying to bounce off of that there. So the near-term line is trying to come up uh, off of um, its low point. Um, we'll see if that ends up... Uh, continuing higher and of course the Russell 2000 had a decent move on an intraday basis long lower shadow which is a good sign after some selling uh, that kept the intermediate line from dropping below 50 so still pink still bearish posture but not strong not a bearish enough to stop this intermediate run uh, off of that low point we did we did breach the Fibonacci resistance zone or retracement zone so it's a little bit of a worrisome and, and if you notice the Russell and the NASDAQ both are trading below falling moving averages. They're both red. So we have bearish postures weak and we're below falling moving averages. So a little bit of concern uh, from those two indexes. A break below 7600 changes the narrative uh, from the NASDAQ's perspective. A break below the 1650 will change the narrative uh, on the uh, Russell 2000. Because, because of the posture, this multi-month uh, rally that we're expecting, um, with volatility, of course, you know, we expect that we'll come up off these lows. But if we don't, you know, if those lows, those levels uh, break, as I mentioned, then, then obviously we're going to head into a, a deeper decline uh, and that, that season of higher volatility as we head towards, over the next few weeks, head towards that August expiration. All right, a reminder that you can watch the Market Outlook on our Market Scholars blog. Uh, just go to marketscholars.com, uh, click on blog, you'll see our posts uh, towards the top. And, and on this page, um, we look for three clicks from you to tell us that you want us to keep doing this. So if you're watching this video, you want us to do this video again tomorrow, let us know with three clicks. Number one, um, by liking today's Market Outlook tweet, you'll see it embedded here, just click on that heart there. Number two, click on this icon that takes you to your Facebook page. Uh, for tonight's Market Outlook Facebook post, you can like like that post there and then three liking here and of course if you think other people should check it out uh, you can share it here we got 34 shares the goal is try to get that shares up to a hundred uh, so you can share it on Twitter you can share it uh, through Facebook you can also share it on LinkedIn and and sending an email let's see if we can't get that number if you feel like others should check this out um, uh, up to a hundred of course you can do all of this right now while you're watching uh, the video all right, so uh, with this weakness that we have, again, um, the backdrop of all this selling the last few days is that we're still we're still above a rising 50-day moving average. We're still, which is also still above a rising 200-day moving average, and that gap is still getting bigger. So, you know, from a long-term perspective, I mean, we're still bullish. There is a little bit of a long upper shadow last week, so that's a little concerning heading into that resistance. Uh, of course, closing below last week's low point would would uh, be the change that we need there, but also closing below that 50-day moving average. You can see we've only had one week since all this mess here. We, once we got up above it uh, with that breakout move at the early May, we've been above the 50-day moving average all but one week. Um, we bounced right back up above it with that green arrow there. If you take a look at the three green arrow charts, uh, we are still not shaded pink here. Uh, so we've got two uh, red arrows, but not the third. We're still above a rising 50-day um, moving average here. You can see uh, the trading range and the volume for future reference here. You can see the trading range just below average uh, at two points and the volume down here at 54 million. So we'll remember that here in just a second. Go to the two-line versions for these green arrows and you'll see Still above, even with today's selling, still above the 17-day moving average, just a smidgen below the 8-day. And they're, 
Eight's still above the 17. They're both still above the 30. 30 still rising. Yes, the MACD and Stochastics are falling and below their moving averages, still in the upper half of their charts. Uh, so it reflects a bearish sentiment uh, and uh, lack of, you know, some bearish momentum, uh, or at least fall, uh, pause, bullish momentum because you're above zero, but falling, uh, weakening bullish momentum there. So as long as we're above that 17-day, uh, then we're okay to bounce off of this from a near-term basis and move up higher. Again, breaking below 2,800 changes that narrative, um, but that would require a break, and we always expect a bounce until it doesn't. Uh, so we expect the near-term low point to form, uh, and we'll see how long it, the 7 to 12 days is how long we expect it to bounce. Uh, if we don't get that, that's when, we're con that's when we're concerned about posture change. So we're moving up now uh, the four-week low point on the intraday chart, and we'll move it up a little bit more tomorrow. And you can see it's going to start moving higher, which is also going to push the midpoint up higher to pro probably last week's low point. You know, last week's low point is right around that 2800. Again, we break below that, things change. We'll be in the lower half of the chart at that point. Um, so we need to see if this near-term bounce form, near-term low forms, we bounce to get back above this 282 level uh, and continue higher. You can see in the after hours here. One second, there we go. In the after hours, we are up at 281.04. So we're up just a little bit. Um, we need to get above 282. Uh, to really feel confident about, you know, this this low point, near-term low point forming, and then starting that seven to twelve day run. Now, remember, I mentioned we were at 54 million um, on the volume and two points on the ATR. So two points is below this average, which continues to fall. It's got a little bearish trend here, and still got some room to fall. Uh, and then volume at 54 million, also below the average. And both those numbers, just really, really low relative to the 52-week range. Uh, and then, of course, the relative ATR is also still in bullish territory. Um, so, you know, there's still a lot of bullish factors out there uh, that, that we still don't see. We're still not getting the high volatility uh, that would suggest um, that we are changing things up. We did bounce up early this morning on volatility before pulling back by the end of the day. It looks like we're trying to form a low point, um, you know, with the MACD and Stochastics both below 50. Uh, we'll see, you know, it's, it still hasn't crossed up above 50 yet, so we're still in the process of forming uh, that low on volatility. And on an absolute base, on a relative basis, excuse me, um, volatility still is in the sweet spot for the bullish territory. You know, this is bullish territory. This is bearish territory. So again, hard to be too bearish. The market's not too concerned about bearishness. Uh, with the VIX down here relative to the three-month VIX, the three-month VIX 3M. All right, so now I'd love to hear your thoughts. So there's a poll popping out uh, top in the top right corner of the video. Click on that link. Uh, it will open up a poll. Click its two answers, agree or disagree. Do you, what, do you, are you bullish too, according to what we've talked about, or, or not? Are you more bullish or are you bearish now already? Uh, if so, click on disagree, and then... Uh, what I'd like you to do is come to our Market Scholars Forum. There's a link uh, in that blog post above the video. Uh, click on that link. That takes you to today's uh, topic uh, on our, in our Market Scholars Forum, so the Market Outlook Forums on marketscholars.com. Reply to that topic. Give me your comments. Tell me what you're thinking about the posture. Tell me why you're more bearish uh, than what the charts are showing here. Or... For those of you who are more bullish than what than what I'm saying, uh, seeing, tell me why. What are you What are you seeing that we haven't looked at uh, that we should be taking into account of? So let me know there in the for, in the market scholars forums. All right, now let's talk about uh, what's driving the price action today. And of course, you know you had ADP. This is a employment week. We had the employment report at the end of the week. You had the ISM manufacturing number, this national manufacturing dropping to 58. Again, context on where that number is and how high we were uh, in the last number. So this is a sentiment survey uh, for uh, that the manufacturing sector. Here's the year-over-year -year construction spending rate continuing to be relatively high compared to uh, where we were at the end of the year. See that over 2017, the year-over-year -year rate has been falling. Uh, we've been slowly rising there. And of course... Uh, the big news today, the FOMC holding steady, uh, their, holding steady their, their interest rate policy. Of course, 
the odds of a rate hike uh, in September uh, are 91%. So we're going to get a third rate hike in September. This is the rate hike odds for December. And you can see um, down here that the odds of staying with only three in 2018 are down below 30%. We're looking at like 25 uh, 20 uh, below 25 percent so um, you're actually getting about here, let's go back to the current rates um, you're at about a 71 70 percent right now odds that you're going to get a rate hike a fourth rate hike for the calendar year uh, in December you remember once you once we hit January we're going to have press conferences from the FOMC at every meeting which opens up the possibility, according to past precedent, that there could be rate hikes at every meeting. Now, in the prior rate hike um, regime, uh, in 2004 to 2006, they did raise rates at every meeting uh, here, but they ended up getting up to five and a quarter percent. They're most likely not going to get up to five and a quarter percent now um, because of all the debt that's out there and all the Fed, all the, the how big the balance sheet is. So they don't have to get up that high because um, they can start reducing the balance sheet and get a similar a restrictive effect on on the economy. Um, so, but, you know, you know, the past precedent during this rate hike regime is to do it at every meeting to where they can talk about it afterwards with the press conferences. Uh, so now, now that we'll have them every meeting starting in 2019 with this one, um, that opens up the door to more rate hikes you can see the odds of a rate hike and of another rate hike in January. Uh, so that would be this 250, 275 are relatively low to start with. So we're not, you know, it's, it's not on the radar yet, but it could be, right? That, that's a number to start to keep an eye on to see, you know, if the Fed feels like inflation is rising. You notice the economic indicators are still kind of matching estimates. It's barely coming in below estimates over the past few months uh, on an average basis. Same thing over... Uh, globally, but you see, you know, today GDP estimates from the Atlanta Fed was raised up to five percent. So that's a second, you know, that would be a second consecutive quarter strong GDP numbers, uh, and the Q3 and Q4 tend to be bigger numbers. Uh, so whereas Q1 is a smaller number, uh, those two tend to be bigger numbers. So we'll keep our eyes on that to see, um, you know, what kind of, you know, to see what kind of move, what kind of uh, expectations we start getting from the Fed if the economy continues to grow at that clip and with it inflation and wages and all of that. One thing I retweeted uh, earlier today is uh, this little note from uh, Ryan Dietrich here. Uh, the S&P closed higher April, May, June, and July. Now these are some relatively weaker months uh, in context um, but, you, but you notice we were up all those months and when, when we have been up all those months uh, the rest of the year returns, see this is the rest of the year returns and the S&P is up those months, uh, tends to be relatively strong, uh, up every single time uh, since 1935 uh, with an average of a 10% move uh, from the current levels, right, from current levels. Now you remember uh, the S&P here, let's go back to, right here, let's just look at this chart and we'll change this to a year-to-date, year-to-date time frame. And you notice, so we started the year, uh, we opened up at 2683, uh, and you can see now we're at, you know, 2813. So, you know, we've had a pretty decent run so far this year. Um, what would that be? Here, let me get my little calculator out here. So 2813 uh, divided by you know, opening up at 2683. So we're already up at 5%, so that would be another 10% on top of this uh, heading. Obviously, that would be the new high. So you remember, the Russell 2000, um, while it has been relatively weak, we have gotten new highs. See, the Russell 2000 is up a lot more over this over year to date. We opened up at 1536 on the Russell. We're at 1639. So we're, you know, we're up eight, over 8% 8 right now. So you know, the Russell, the NASDAQ also is doing pretty well on a, a year to, uh, a year to date basis up 10%. So, you know, the the markets doesn't seem like it's had a good calendar year um, because of the the volatility that we've had especially in February and then you know some more near some intermediate pullbacks that we've had uh, here lately, but 
the reality is we've had a decent run, and according to past precedent, of course, you know, nothing's 100% in technical analysis, but according to past precedent, the odds are pretty good uh, that we'll have a decent return um, by the end of the year from today going forward to the end of the year. And that would jive with, you know, this multi-month, you know, this, this market sentiment run that the market sentiment line just, just got above. We're on the second intermediate run of this market sentiment rally, right? And we are a month into that second run. Uh, so that would kind of jive with a couple more expected intermediate runs on this current long-term rally. Take a look at the different asset classes, and you can see uh, stocks were down a little bit today, but you see they were the best performing asset classes out of all. You know, real estate stocks continue to do very well, and growth stocks are up there with a the nice, good move from Apple. But the biggest losers were crude oil and commodities and bonds. Uh, there's your dividend stocks and preferred stocks also uh, dropping down. Uh, you can see anything bond related really dropped. Uh, the corporate bonds fell, long term bonds fell. Uh, Short-term bonds didn't, but uh, mortgage-backed securities, um, uh, municipal bonds, all of them um, really struggled today. When you take a look at the foreign bonds, you know, foreign markets, you can see chi the, uh, these international areas, these uh, China, um, Russia, you know, both of those had some good moves lately. They, they both pulled back, China especially pulling back here. Uh, with the idea that maybe there hasn't been as much of a softening in the trade wars as we expected. Um, pretty much all of these uh, European stocks also pulling back Italy, uh, Germany, France, uh, India holding up pretty strongly, South Korea holding up strong, a little bit of a pullback in Canada, um, and you can see uh, Great Britain really pulling back pretty strongly too, and there's Brazil pulling back towards uh, rising moving averages. You can look at all the green here, and this one's going to be green now too tomorrow for France. Uh, and also Germany's is going to be green. You have green moving averages that we haven't had for, for at the, it, that, towards the beginning of this three-month period. It was the last time that they were green. So now we're below, you know, this, you know, we're, we're you know, coming down from a lower high point here. Uh, so we'll see, and, and not all of them are green. You still have uh, some yellow lines here on China and on Italy and on South Korea. Um, so that means their moving averages are still falling. Same thing with um, uh, UK, but the one stalwart that continues to have a rising moving average is still green um, and strong bullish posture is the US stock market. So, you know, again, context is key here. We might think that we're pretty bearish, but the reality is we're not nearly as bearish as some of these other areas. We have 5% or nearly 6% three month gains. Um, there's there aren't very many other positives over the last three months. Canada, India, and Russia, the only other major economies, uh, some of them down double digits. Uh, Italy, uh, Korea, and Brazil still down uh, double digits over a three month period, and China pretty close. All right, so now when you look at the sectors, um, it's interesting to see again the biggest losers were the tariff sensitive areas, industrials and materials. Uh, pulling back towards their moving averages, coming down from their highs. Uh, industrials is an area we focused on yesterday, and, and Caterpillar in particular already dropping pretty sharply uh, with that weakness. Uh, this shows how sensitive those areas are uh, to the headlines, uh, especially related to the trade wars. Um, but the other thing is these, other, these are all the sectors over here um, that fell below the S&P 500, and utilities and staples are both down here. Those are... Those are risk off areas and they're not outperforming like you'd expect during this pullback. You continue to have uh, real estate doing well. You have healthcare holding up strong. Financials bounced up uh, again today. You can see uh, technology, or holding up at least. Technology uh, had the best performer thanks to, uh, performance thanks to Apple. So it's got the potential to regain some leadership there. Um, those are your outperforming sectors and all of them above rising moving averages, healthcare and financial still have strong bullish postures, um, technology and discretionary still moving towards the 50th percentile, um, uh, the real estate bouncing back up to and getting close to 80%, um, and you can see uh, some of these others, utilities, staples, you know, they are, they have strong bullish postures, they're, they're kind of, um, running out of gas, so to speak. Again, it shows this how risk, you know, how we're not really risk off right now 
um, while they've been performing pretty well, 2%, 6%, both lagging the market over, or excuse me, here we go, both kind of matching or lagging the market over the last three months. Uh, strong bullish postures, um, but not really breaking out here um, like you'd expect. And of course, down at the bottom of this list on a daily basis. So, you know, healthcare, you know, still an area that's strong, that's holding up and, and you know, it's had some, some pressure given to it in the past from an administration standpoint, a headline standpoint, but with all the focus on uh, these areas, industrials and materials, healthcare has been able to benefit and really outpace the market over the last three months. In fact, real estate, technology, healthcare, um, and discretionary, all market beating returns over this three month period, slightly higher returns from staples. All right, a stock that's in that uh, healthcare area that's been doing well and it's got a rising moving average, it's got three green arrows now, is Amgen. Um, uh, you can see coming off a low point, a uh, strong move yesterday, a little bit of a pullback today, um, but a strong uh, bounce higher yesterday with decent volume yesterday. Didn't get the third green arrow on the MACD, but pretty darn close. Um, you know, you take a look at you know, you sell the 190, 185 put vertical standard, um, put vertical spread trade. You can see where the break even would be uh, when doing that. Well, that, that slice is right below that low point. It's exactly where you want it to be. Trying to make $123 off the $377 risk, uh, getting out uh, at a $123 loss. So that would put us uh, below this 187 and a half level. Well, just, you know, 187 and a half, that is down below that blue line so it's exact you know below those low points we'd have to nullify this bounce and break back below those lows uh, for us to um, be to be uh, get out of this trade with that one to one uh, loss setup and you can see a phantom green arrow higher low point um, very good setup uh, from a trend perspective at least for support to hold of course nothing's 100 percent but it already has relatively high odds simply because of the current volatility levels. Um, but add in the fact that there's a pretty decent support right here, uh, that there's a good chance that we can stay in this area. Uh, that gives us a good opportunity for this put vertical spread. All right, so now I want to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts, uh, what you think about the market posture, uh, with what we talked about tonight. What are your thoughts on this trade idea? Um, let me know with that uh, link that's popping out there that will take you to our forums, to the Market Outlook forums on marketscholars.com. Uh, let's continue this discussion tonight and tomorrow. Uh, be able to reply to each other as well. Um, but there's the link uh, to, there's the topic that I've created for any questions or comments that you have on tonight's Market Outlook video. So love to hear your thoughts. Again, just a quick link over there and, and let me know. Um, I appreciate you watching tonight. Remember to subscribe to our video. Um, also like tonight's video by clicking the thumbs up icon and comment. Uh, also follow on Twitter for more content and join our Market Outlook community uh, on Facebook. Have a great evening everybody. Brandon will be back on tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you all next time.